Okay, so I got a new light for my um, microscope. I had a little light that I was using before, which is actually this thing here. It's actually a book light, and it is only cost seven dollars, and it's kind of um, really cheap. I had to repair it several times already, and it is uh, a little bit inconvenient. So I bought a proper light for the microscope here. Um, you can probably see it's got like two gooseneck lights. And it's got a control unit here. You can turn it on and you control the brightness. And I found this thing on a microscope store in, on AliExpress. <clears throat> And for what it is, I think that was a reasonable price. You kind of put it behind the uh, microscope, which is what I've done. And of course, we're using a camera microscope, not one of those binocular ones, but it seems to work quite well. Cheaper than what some of the other people are flogging on the internet um, and you really need one of those things for micro soldering so let's have a look so you turn it on and you can actually has lenses in there and then you can manipulate these things to uh, light up the area from an angle that is suitable. Now, let's move to the uh, actual microscope so we can have a look what's happening. Move that a little bit. So. <clears throat> I just arbitrarily set the microscope here. Uh, I can go in closer or further away, but so this is with the gooseneck lights on, and I can increase the brightness, but unfortunately the camera on this thing will knock the brightness back down again. I'm looking for a better camera that actually I can control the brightness with manually. But still, it um, as you can see, it gives me a good view with no much glare and stuff like that. Well, if I turn off the external light, it will be even better. Um, you can read the numbers on the chips, which sometimes can be hard. Uh, and by changing the angle, you can kind of make those chips light up. Now, with the overhead light, so let's turn off the goose like the external light, the gooseneck lights. This is what it looks like with the overhead lights. Now you think to yourself, well that's not bad, um, but it is quite different. You can see a lot of glare, and that's what you get with these um, overhead lights. Uh, like the traces over here, it's hard to work out how they actually work. Whereas if you got the external light on you can actually and I've got the overhead light on at the same time now so sometimes that actually is good but I'll turn it off so now you can actually see you know where the traces go and uh, if there's any damage and stuff like that and another thing with the overhead lights here so let's bring up I, I want to remove some of these um, Where is it? Over here. See all these little capacitors? I want to remove some of those. So this is with the overhead light. And so if I put some flux on these things.
you will find that um, it is not doesn't look too bad but once the flux starts melting you'll get a lot of glare on there so that's what it looks like with the overhead light uh, let's switch to the those light uh, the gooseneck light now I'm gonna turn on my soldering tweezers here all right let's have a look see that's with the gooseneck light the overhead lights so you get all these little um, reflections now this overhead light actually I've already put a filter on there I think I have a, a previous video when I did a, a review on this um, microscope and it is a lot better than it used to be without that filter on there um, it was really glary in any case let's use these These are probably going to be hard to remove. They're right on the uh, without putting lead at solar on there, but I'm going to try anyway. This is right underneath. This is like a laptop motherboard, and it's right underneath where the the uh, CPU would sit. There is a lot of heat that actually gets lost over there. Yeah, I think you need to put some leaded solder on there. You're not going to get those things off. There's one. Of course, you can use hot air on those things. That's number two. Number three. I'm actually planning to use these little competitors somewhere, that's why I want them. Because I'm presuming that they're just bypass capacitors, and I need some bypass capacitors. Okay. I have my hand in front of that of the lights there that's why it was a bit dim okay so that is what that looks like you can see all the nice uh, shiny and of course you can you can change the angle of the lights you can use one light if you want then of course you will get shading on one side you can if you come more overhead it will be more like the overhead light or you can give it more of an angle whatever is required I like to have them like this a little bit up higher 
and a little bit of a, an angle, maybe 30 degrees or something. And you can change the the brightness. Okay, overhead light again. So now you can really see that area where I removed those um, capacitors. Uh, you get a lot of glare there, it's a little bit hard to work out. But with the gooseneck lights here, I kind of knocked it so. You can clearly see where, where the little um, devices are. So let's have a look. Okay, there you go. Really should have put more flux on there, but I was just wondering. That's what it would look like. It needs a bit of flux in order to make sure that the okay. Now you see it. Now you don't. Okay. So yeah, I am uh, thinking that this is not a bad deal. I really like it. So I just want to make my job a lot simpler and. You see what I mean with this this camera? I'm I'm increasing the brightness, but the camera adjusts itself. So I'm looking for a better a better camera than what this one has, so I can actually adjust the brightness manually. But I'm still looking. I think I found one, but I put a question into the. Uh, in fact, on this on this uh, same on this same store they seem to have some different cameras here but I am not and I think these ones have, you see, you can actually set the brightness here manually, I think. I've asked them a question if that is, uh, if that works. Does it say anything here? It's kind of a strange camera. It has a. It comes with a mouse. You plug the mouse in the uh, USB port, and you control the settings through the mouse. I, I gather. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I thought I'd do a little review on that. I'm very happy with this. a little memory chip so you see what I mean with the overhead light you can't read the lettering on there but with the gooseneck lights you can easily see it's a wind bond 25 times 16 and if you change the angle of the light, you can even make it come up a little bit.
better. Hmm. Let me have a look now. This little memory chip I can probably use for something. Put some hot care on it. So was a little memory chip that I can use for something. What else is on here? SLG eight SP. I wonder what that is. However, again, with the overhead light, it's very hard to read those things. So, as I said, this is a good um, thing to have. Looks like some sort of uh, very large. Is that a capacitor or a some sort of diode? I wonder. Okay, I'm not sure what that thing is, but I'm going to take it off. Some leaded solder on there. Put some flux on already. I've got some bigger tweezers, but I think these can do it. Yeah, see, easy. PD1 and PD2 they look like diodes to me yep ordinary silicon diodes Okay, yeah, as I said, these um, Atten tweezers, I love these things. I'm going to get their hot air station as well, 265D or something. I'm planning to get. <clears throat> anyway, I think that's enough fun for now. These lights work here. Turn the brightness up and down. 
this is the overhead light that you saw. It still has its uses. Sometimes you need the overhead light to look at certain things. But these gooseneck lights, they are, I almost would say that you can't do without them if you're doing micro soldering. Anyway, I'll see you guys later.